Hi. I'm Cheryl. I go to church here. How you doing, Cheryl? My name is Todd Bullis. Nice to meet you. So, would you ever like to come and join our service sometime? Well, I've I've actually heard lots of services. The reason the reason we're out here is just because you know there's 60,000 abortions every year in Texas and Texans really don't want to make it illegal like churches like this and pastors like this and men like I just talked to they don't do anything to make it illegal they'll pray about it and they'll give to crisis pregnancy centers but they won't do the things that it takes to make it illegal and we could make it illegal in a week easily you know in fact like 30,000 churches like this one 70,000 pastors in Texas and we have 13,000 kids in foster care waiting to be adopted kids like him and kids like these kids over here but nobody wants them because they're not babies, you know? When we have 70,000 pastors, if just the pastors acted Christian, there'd be no orphans rotting away in foster care because that's what they really do is they rot in foster care because they're not really being loved. There's some good foster parents, there are, but you know, right now that's where the gays and lesbians are getting their kids from foster to adopt. So we're just trying to expose everybody and say, hey, look, this is legal in Texas and we should actually make it illegal. We shouldn't stop doing other things, you know, here, I'll give you one of these. Sure. We shouldn't stop doing other things like feeding homeless and, and helping people. Like, right. those are good things. Have you spoken to any of our pastors? No, but um, I know that the one uh, law that was tried to put through, n nobody from your church knows about it. Nobody knows what's going on. There weren't anybody in Austin, you know, there's nobody calling the, you know, the pastors in, uh, in you know, cause I live, I live here in uh, Denton County, I'm not in Frisco, but Denton County, Little Elm. And the pastors don't care. Like I've spent a lot of time calling when and you say they don't care. I just, I just, I, I can't understand why you would say that. Okay? Well, because they don't do the things that it takes to make it illegal. Like the pastors, like, so like what? well, they made a bill um, and the governor said that um, they couldn't speak ill of like gays and lesbians mm -hmm. and that they had to um, submit their sermons to make sure that they were audited, right? right? Well, all the pastors got together and went to Austin and gathered and said, look, this is wrong. We shouldn't do this. But they don't do that for abortion. They should do that for abortion. They should get together and say, look, we as leaders, men in the community, believe that it's murder and sin and we should stop it. You know, Texas used to be a slave state, right? Where it was legal to own slaves and you could have a black woman slave and you could rape her and you could kill her and it would be, that's your property. Well, it's the same thing with abortion today, right? These women can do whatever they want and kill their baby and, and it's okay. And even though we say it's wrong, but if we don't do anything about it, like here's what all these pastors do, all right? They have a, a sun, uh, they have like a Tuesday morning pastor's breakfast, right? And they're all sitting in Denny's and they're all talking about everything. And they look out the window and they see a woman getting raped. And one pastor says, we should have more women's ministries. And the other pastor looks at it, the rape going on and says, we should have like women recovery programs. That's the mentality of our church today in Texas. We shouldn't have that mentality. We should get out and save that woman. We should do what it takes to prevent that rape from happening, well, I can right? Tell you, there are programs in this church where they are helping every single kind of person that you just listed. Right. Yeah. Right. All these yeah. programs, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is is it's not about the programs. It's about doing what's right. So we need to go to the government because they could make abortion illegal today because it's already illegal in the Texas um, Constitution. We don't have to follow the feds. Like many states right now are saying, hey, we're gonna make... You have to do both. Well, yeah, I'm not saying stop helping like drug addicts. Right. We should help them. Right. <laughs> or, or kids that have been abused, we should help them. Right. But we should make abortion illegal too. Mm -hmm. You know, because 60,000 a year in Texas. So that's why we're here. We're not here because we hate anybody here. Okay. We're just trying to expose it and say, Church repent. I mean, that's, yeah. You know, it's, well, it's, repentance. It's just offensive to somebody like me who, I mean, I come here every day, you know, uh -huh. I pray and, you know, these men are preaching the Bible. Right. And so. But they're also the men that are allowing abortion to go unchecked in our communities, you know? And so the, the repentance begins at the house of the Lord change begins at the house of God, right? Yeah. Like we can't go to yeah, evil, wicked people and say, hey, you guys need to change. We have to go to us and say, look, we need to stand up because we're men at the gates. We're men in the community and we need to be the ones that, that protect innocent life. Like what does the Bible say true religion is? You know, what did Jesus say true religion is? Is protecting widows and orphans in their time of distress. That d takes no offense. Like God loves that, right? But what does he say? to um, communities where child sacrifice goes unopposed. In the Bible, he says things like this, put away your songs, your instruments, though your prayers be many, I will not hear them. 
first bring justice to the land and then bring your praise and worship to us, right? So God doesn't want us spending time going to like a country club, all right? He wants us to bring justice and mercy to the land, right? But we don't care because we're all rich and doing well and you know, we're driving our Beamers and we got $300,000, I have a $300,000 house too. We got, you know, big houses and you know, but mercy and justice in the land is totally ignored. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that to communities like ours, that you dress the wounds lightly. Like you cover them up, but you don't really care, you know? It's like somebody's got this big old huge gaping wound in their arm and we just put a band-aid on it. Right. And we shouldn't do that. We should actually care. So in the, in here it talks about, you know, abolish abortion in Texas because we start here, right? And then we, we go everywhere else. Right. But we need to we need to be a voice for the voiceless. And prayer works when we get up and do what the Bible says. So if we just pray, then we're not being obedient to the word of God. Because it says, bring justice. It says, defend the innocent. It says, hold back those that are being led to slaughter. Mm -hmm. But if we just pray, you know, because God uses people like you and me to do his work. Like we can't just go, Lord, I'm hungry. Please fill my stomach. Lord, I'm hungry. Just fill my stomach. He'll say, I already gave you the food. Just go eat it. Right? And the same thing. We're more than conquerors. We're supposed to take to look at all these people. Oh my gosh, if all these people would have went to Austin when there was a rally to make abortion illegal, our pro-life, because the pro-lifeism is really evil and wicked, because the pro-life movement, what it does is it regulates when, where, and how you can kill babies. Pro-life movement has never put anything forward to say we should make it illegal, that it's murder, ever, in the history of the pro-life movement. The pro-life movement is a fake system to make people give them money. Like, did you know that every single, um, Supreme Court justice, except for one, was voted by pro-life presidents, elected by pro the pro-life movement, that vo that Roe v. Wade, the, the, those Supreme Court justices were all put in by Republican pro-lifers that voted for pro Roe v. Wade, all right, except for one, and that one was a Democrat, and I'm not a Democrat, but, you know, what I'm saying is giving money to the pro-life movement is supporting abortion, and we need to stop that, we need to make it illegal. You know, like they'll say, well, we're doing it incrementally. We've been doing it for 40, 43 years, over si almost 64 million babies and no law. In fact, the abolitionist us, we put forth a law in Austin to make abortion illegal. And it talks about it in here. And uh, we had 11 uh, representatives that signed it. But the guy that puts it to the floor, a Republican right to right, Texas right to life guy, mm -hmm. tabled it and wouldn't let it ever come up, you know, and it's sad. That guy should be thrown, that, that guy actually should be tried and hung, you know, as a murderer because all these babies are being killed. We live in a republic and we live in Texas. What happens is happens by the permission of the good men. Like we can tell how good our society is based on how we treat the least of these, the least of us, you know? And what's more least than an unwanted baby in his mother's womb? Not even the mother wants it. We need to adopt these kids we need to help these mothers we need to like be the church like this actually isn't a church I and mean, i know you think you go to a church but you don't go to a church this is a 501c3 right it's a corporation it's a legal corporation Where do you worship? well we do home church but here's the thing you and i are the church we are the bride of christ right mm -hmm. that is a corporation all right it's a legal entity all right so we do home church just like in acts like in the bible acts we do it like the Bible has it shown us uh, as examples. We do it like that. So the reason they call this corporate worship is because this is a corporation. So this is a corporation worship. That's what they're doing. All these people are coming together and they're wor worshiping as a corporation, right? And I, I honestly, and I know it's kind of offensive, but I see this as just a country club and people go there for their religious services. You know, like if they were actually- I've grown as a Christian because of the people that I've yeah. learned from here. I mean, I can read my Bible, but I mean, I don't feel like that I am knowledgeable enough, and right. so I've really been able to grow. Right because of listening. To right, you need to have pastors that pastor you, that lift you up, that raise you up to do the work. Mm -hmm. It's always to do the work, right? Yeah. But if you have a pastor who you've never had never been to his house, the pastor's never been to your house. What well, does it matter where it is? Well, because if you never dined with your pastor, if you never spent time with your pastor, he's not your pastor. 
He's an admi Chuck Swindoll's an administrator. He's a speaker. He's not yeah, a pastor. But he is very knowledgeable about the Word of God. He's Satan. I'm not saying he's Satan, but Satan ha is very knowledgeable of the Word of God. Evil, so wicked your, people. So your home people are just as, just as, I mean, they could be just as. They could be, yeah. yeah. But you could tell by their fruit. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? Yeah. All right, what's their yeah. fruit? Jesus said to judge people by their fruit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we could, like if we wanted to, we could spend time, well, what's your fruit and go through that. Or we could do mine, which is a lot easier. Like I actually save babies. I actually like adopt kids. I actually like help bring people to salvation, right? Um, like we, we uh, support mothers, you know, like we actually have good fruit. We all do that. Yeah, well, when we say we all do that, you're pointing, it's kind of like someone who says, well, we go to the abortion mills and, and try to talk women out of having an abortion, but nobody actually knows anybody that does it. But they say, well, we have people that do that. So, and you're like corporately taking that on yourself. Like, well, no, I'm a good person. Look at my fruit. That person adopts kids. You know, that person does this. But at some point we all have to examine our lives and say, what is my fruit? Not am I learning, not am I growing in my knowledge? Because the Bible says, it should be both right but how much do you need to know to be obedient to god not a whole lot you know so most people want to like the bible says they learn but they never learn they keep learning but they never learn in other words they never get it like god wants obedience not sacrifice yeah, you know tell you what, um, probably even just last year uh -huh. i would not have ever even come up and talked to you yeah that is awesome yeah first thing whenever I saw it, you know, I was like, what is this? Yeah, it's crazy, and right? As I, as I was in church, I was like, we need to invite them to come in. Yeah. You know, yeah. and hear, yeah. you know, what Chuck Swindoll preaches and, and you know, be actually. Well, yeah, we're him. not here because we think he preaches evil stuff or that he's not saved. Yeah. I think he, we're yeah. here to let people know. Signs, it, it, it's just, it's very unnerving when you see the signs. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. The, the churchians hate that sign because mm -hmm. don't point the light of Christ on us. Like that bothers me. Like, well, how dare you say that we need to repent? We're the good people. Yeah, I mean, but, I, know, I know God has been working in me. I mean, I can just tell you because like I said a year ago, I would yeah. not have ever even come up. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's good. I'm glad you did. So yeah. very few people have. It's very nice to meet you. It's good to meet you too. Sorry, tell yeah. you, tell Todd. Todd. My Todd. name's Todd. Cheryl. Yeah. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah, we have to go.